have a good time. Let me be up in here having some god time, and you're good on the genuine. Like yeah. illumination, illumination, you light up my life like you lit up creation. Won't let me drown, you my flotation. Won't let me thirst, 'cause you my hydration. Yeah. So I'ma do my dancing rhymes. This love is gonna last, you wrong. You're everything to me, everything I need, everything I wanna be, JC. You got me like yeah. Jesus is his name, and I'm all about him. I live to bring him praise. He is the way and the truth and the life. God is three in one, reigning undefeated. Our God is overcome. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me tell you about him. King of kings, Lord of lords.
So good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's just shout. Woo! Yeah. Come on. Ladies, son, just bring your best praise. Oh, no, you know we did, and it's all for Jesus' name. Tell me what's up. Did you bring a sacrifice? That's what you know we did, and it's all to lift him high. Let's get into the presence of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your a good, good God. You're so good in every circumstance, God. You provide, Jesus. You are Jireh. You never leave us. You're always there. Thank you, God. Come on. Let's just prepare your heart. Let's just focus on God. Oh, Lord, we're nothing without you, Lord. 
nothing I can do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now Going through a storm but I won't go down I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me
such an awesome God, for being such a good God. Um, Father God, today we want to learn about how to turn our dreams into reality. God, please continue to guide us, to lead us, to help us with our lives, so we can live according to your will. We surrender it all to you, God. You give us the wisdom. You give us the capability. You give us the love, the peace, the grace that comes only from you. And use this humble servant of, of yours so every word that comes out from my mouth comes only from you thank you god in jesus name we pray all believers says amen all right shalom everyone uh again my name is brian uh, today i want to share about how to turn dreams into reality as we know we just entered a new year right 2022 and we just had the chinese new year and we are entering this post-pandemic era, which is, I think, going to be a new season for everyone. 
the approaches are changing, the world is changing, people now doing remote work, <coughs> um, people doing online school, a lot of things are changing right now. So we as Christians are entering a ground zero, a common ground zero for everyone that we can think and we can use in our lives. So my topic today is how to turn our dreams into reality because I believe everyone should have dreams. I have dreams. I have my goals that I want to what I want to be and I believe you do too. Right? I believe you also have dreams. What you want to be in the future, what you want to become, right? But the key is how do we turn these dreams into reality? How do we fulfill our dreams? So, we are entering a new season. That's why I actually like it when we enter a new year. Because usually, people will have the so-called New Year's resolution. But what is that, actually? A New Year's resolution. What you want to do this year. What you want to achieve. What do you want to overcome this year. Right? But most of all, most important of all, it gives us new hope. Usually when it's a new year or a new season or we're entering a new school probably uh, in this 2022, some people would go into college, some people would graduate from college and enter the, the marketplace, right? It gives us a new hope to change what we were into the new us. For example, when we enter a new school, when we have a bad habit in our junior high school, for example, now we're entering a new uh, senior high school in a new school, and then you think, I don't want to be lazy anymore. I don't want to be, you know, a forgetful anymore. So I want to change. It gives you a hope. It gives you a chance to become a better you, to become a new you, right? So having a dream is always good that we know what we want to achieve. But most important of all, how do we turn these dreams into reality? So today I want to talk about three topics, only three things. There's actually a lot more, but I want to talk about three fundamental things on how we can turn our dreams into reality. First of all, is to align our dreams with God's will. Because we, all of us can have dreams. But let's read, let's read from Proverbs 19, verse 21. And I'm going to be reading from NLT version. It says like this, You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. So we can make our own plans, we can make our dreams, we can have our dreams, but we have to check whether our dreams is aligned with God's purpose in our lives, is whether our dreams are aligned with God's will. So the question is, how do we know that? First and foremost, we have to know our God. We have to know our God. So, for example, I'll give you an example. If your mom and dad gave, give you a call, can you recognize their voice? Yes? Even if your mom and dad call using someone else's phone, will you be able to determine that, they, that it's their voice? Yes? Most of you say yes, right? Why? Because you know their voice. You recognize their voice. When they call using their friend's uh, phone, they call like, Hey, Brian, where are you? Dad, whose phone is this? Right? Because you know it's your dad's voice. Because you know it's your mom's voice. Because you recognize their voice. Same with our God. If we know our God, if we read our Bibles, right? If, you, if we like, fulfill ourselves with worship songs, we can sense His atmospheres. We know His will. We know His purpose in life, in, in our lives. When we pray, we know His responses then we know our God. When we know our God, we can ask and we can align our dreams with His will. Sometimes it's from 
the verses that we read sometimes is from the worship songs that we sing or we hear. Sometimes it's from other people telling us, gives us confirmation or gives us warning, gives us red flags. So we have to be more sensitive on what God is telling us. So we know whether our dreams are aligned with God's will. Second is about having a vision and purpose. And better if we have a shared vision and purpose. With whom? With your family? With your friends? Because when we are together, we are stronger, right? Stronger together. So when people have a shared vision and purpose, they have the same goal and trying to go towards the same goal you'll be stronger and your odds on fulfilling your dreams would be higher. All right. Jeremiah 32, verse 18b to 19, NLT version again, says this, You are the great and powerful God, the Lord of heaven's armies. You have all wisdom and do great and mighty miracles. You see the conduct of all people and you give them what they deserve. Listen to this. It says, you, get, you see the conduct of all people. You see how people do. And you give them what they deserve. So the Bible says, in Jeremiah, it says that God look at what we do and give us rewards according to them. According to what we do. So I believe if we do something, we try to fulfill our dreams, we try hard, and we are aligned with God's will, God will give us the reward. Let me ask you something. Who knows the grandpa beside me? I believe you can see an image here. Samuel Pierpont Langley. Anybody knows him? No? How about these two brothers, Wilbur and Orville Wright? Have anyone heard about them? Yes? I bet some of you, I believe some of you, would have heard of Wilbur and Orville Wright. They were known as the founder or the inventor of planes of an aircraft. A hundred years ago, they talk about they're the people who cracked the code of how people can fly. So, I want to tell you the story about Grandpa Samuel Pierpont Langley and Wilbur and Orville Wright. Grandpa Pierpont Langley was the guy who everyone at that era, 120 years ago, thought would invent aircraft. He was a, a very brilliant astronomer. He was the head of research in like a research foundations. He was very well known. He was probably like the top 0.1% highest IQ in the world at that time. So everyone, including the government, including the media, everyone says if anyone can crack the code, and how of how people can fly, it's going to be Grandpa Samuel. That's going to be him. He's the guy. Thus, the government keep on funding him, giving him grants, giving him funds to do some research, to crack this code on how people can fly. So he got a lot of money. He got a lot of resources. He got a very nice office that the government has given him to make aircraft, to crack the code how people can fly. He was the top of the top, so he can, imagine right now, it's like NASA, right? Right now we're talking about going to Mars, 120 years ago they talk about how people can fly. That's the thing that they had to crack at that time. So people keep talking, people giving him, so he has everything. 
So he kept on hiring probably from the Ivy Leagues, from the Harvards and the Stanfords and the Cambridge and the Oxfords, the most brilliant people. He hired all of them. So he has what it takes, everything it takes to crack the code of how people can fly. Whether, whereas Wilbur and Orville Wright, who were they? They were bicycle makers. They were a nobody, commoners, just like us, normal people. They're not the brightest of the bunch. They're never known as very smart people. They're just regular people who make bicycles. So you can imagine these two contrasting. It's, and it's not just two. It, at that time, there's a lot of other you know, uh, people trying to crack this code, okay? So there's a lot of competitors. But we just focus on these two. Wilbur and Orville Wright only had their barn. That's where they tried, uh, tried to crack this code, right? They have their barn and their friends, all unpaid, all just try to help Wilbur and Orville Wright to crack this code. Whereas, Grandpa Samuel, Grandpa Langley, has a great office, a big office, all the funding, all the research materials, all the smartest people at his, as his subordinates, as his team members. So the question is, we all know who won. We all know that Wilbur and Orville Wright are the ones who created planes, created aircrafts. The question is, how come? Why? Because Grandpa Langley was focused on the money, on the power, on the fame. All his subordinates, you can imagine, so they work 9 to 5, 9 to 6, probably. They're there for the money. They get paid very heftily. They get paid good money to work for Grandpa Langley, right? It's good for their CV to work for NASA right now, right? To work for Grandpa uh, Langley's company was a lucrative job, was a very prestigious job, good money. So they were all there for the money and the fame. Whereas Wilbur Orville Wright's friends, they were unpaid. What they were given was a shared vision and purpose. They worked day and night, day and night, day and night to crack this code together as family, as a group of people with a common goal. That's why they succeeded, because they have this purpose. They have this goal together. That's how we also have to, uh, should treat our dreams. I want to show you a picture of Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk is the plane that uh, Wilbur and Orville Wright made. So, and then I said, Grandpa Langley was focused on the money, on the fame, on the power, right? You know why, why I said that? Because if, when this happens, imagine, yeah, you are, you are doing, you are Grandpa Langley, you did all the research and someone else has uh, beaten you to it. They cracked the code, they made people fly. But you have all the government grants, you have all the government resources. What should you do? You should talk to them, right? Hey, I know you cracked the code, let's make it better. I have all the resources, I have all the money. Let's do it together. But you know what Grandpa Langley did? He shut down his whole operation. The money is running low from the government. But he shut down his whole, whole operation. Why? Because even if, if he crack it now, he won't get the fame. He won't get the power. Because it's been taken away by Wilbur and Orwell Wright for doing it first. But if you really have the desire, if you really have the dream, it should not matter. So guys, if you have a dream, make sure you have a vision and purpose on what problem you are solving. What is your dream? What is you're trying to 
make the world a better place. And if you can, share it with your family, share it with your friends, so you all have a common purpose, common vision in what your dreams are. What are your dreams for 316? What are your dreams for your church? What can you make better from your church? How can you help your pastors in your church? Have that dream. Have those goals. Last but not least, I want to talk about faith, hard work, and perseverance. Guys, if I ask you about basketball player traits, what can you give me? Basketball player traits. Most of you would say tall, right? Because height is like identical with basketball players. Basketball players are known to be very, very tall, right? Some of you would say very strong, very athletic, but most of you would say tall. That's gonna be your top of mind thinking of basketball players, right? But I wanna talk to you about a guy called Tyrone Muggsy Bogues. So his name is Tyrone Bogues, but his nickname is Muggsy. Muggsy was the shortest NBA basketball player in history. He's even shorter than me. He's uh, in centimeters, he's only like 160. So you can, if you're ha taller than 160, you can say you're taller than an NBA basketball player, right? So Muggsy was the shortest basketball player ever in the history of the NBA. And he's not a bad player either. So he was always known for his dribbling ability, for his passing ability, for his stealing ability. But why am I talking about Muggsy? I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, if you, if you don't think this, but I believe when he was younger, most people would try to put him down. Most people will say, Muggsy, what are you doing? Basketball players have to be tall. Don't be delusional. You are short. Find some other sports for short people. Right? How many people would say, you're dreaming too much, Muggsy. You're not going to be able to make it. You are short. You have to know yourself. You don't be delusional. You won't be able to achieve to be an NBA player. They will look for the taller guys, right? So people would try to bring Muggsy down. People will say, you are not good enough. You are not tall enough. You are not strong enough. But remember I said Muggsy has, Muggsy was known for his dribbling ability, passing ability, Stealing ability. You know why? Because he can turn his so-called weaknesses, which is his height, to be his strength. Muggsy's dribbling style was very short dribble. So he created a very short dribble. Imagine how would the tall guys take the ball from him? They want to lie down. Right? It's very hard for his opponents to get the ball from him. And that stealing ability. Imagine when, uh, when his opponent crouch, it's like the high level of Muggsy. It's very good for him to steal the ball. So guys, you can turn our so-called weakness into the strength if we know what to do, if we believe in what we can do, and we believe what value we can bring to the table. So if you have faith, hard work, and perseverance, believe me, in your dreams, in your journey, someone will try to pull you down. 
Someone will say, you're not good enough. Someone will say, you should try something else. Someone will say, maybe it's just not for you. But listen to this. Listen what, to what the Bible has to say. <coughs> Galatians 6 verse 9, NLT version says this. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings. If what? If we don't give up. If, if, if what? If we don't give up. Say in fulfilling our dreams, don't give up. Be like Muggsy. Turn that so-called weakness into your strength. Change the game. Right? If someone says, you're not good enough. Again, you have to align your dreams with God's will. Is it aligned or not? If it's aligned, if you know that God wants you to do it, you will be able to achieve So I'm going to conclude, it, conclude this with this. So in fulfilling our dreams, again, have big dreams. Have big dreams. But in fulfilling our dreams, we have to be able, we have to, be able to set these three things straight. First of all, we have to align our dreams with God's will. Make sure that we have aligned our dreams with God's purpose in our lives. And then, and with that, we have to know our God, right? Secondly, that we have to have a vision and purpose. We have to make our dream our vision and purpose. And better if we can share it with our family and friends so we can have a shared vision and purpose. Look at Wilbur and Orville Wright. They were nobody, a commoner. But they work, not for the money, but they work for the dream. We can change the world. Last but not least, faith, hard work, and perseverance. Don't give up. There will be many people that try to put you down, but do not give up. Because what did God say? At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. God bless you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that today we can learn about turning our dreams into reality. Thank you, Father, that you have given us the ways to understand for us to align our dreams with your will. To have the vision, that purpose, and purpose that you've given us in our lives. Because we know that your ways is always better than our ways. And God, please give us the strength, the capability, the faith to persevere, to keep on going, and never give up for us in fulfilling our dreams. We want to surrender our future into your hands, God. We know that you are an awesome God and that we put our future, our lives in your hands. Please continue to guide us, continue to lead us. Our time is limited, but your time is not. Keep on working in us. And may we live according to your will and your guidance. Thank you, Father. We surrender it all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. All believers says, Amen. God bless you. See you next time.